Good morning, church. How's everybody doing today? Yeah, it's a beautiful day, and we're in the house of the Lord. Amen. Why don't you guys stand to your feet as we worship the Lord together this morning? very first time. We're so glad that we have you here with us. Um, you can go out the main door here and just to the right there's a communication hub and we have a gift for you. So we would love to meet you and we would love to connect you. We'd love to give you a gift and if this is your church home please scan the QR code in your service guide and check in. Let us know that you're here. You can see all of what's happening at Harvest by checking by scanning that QR code 
and register for any events that need registration for. You can give there. You can share prayer requests there. So please take advantage of that code because we love to communicate with you. So we have three announcements as usual. The first one is VBS. Everyone received a VBS card in your service guide today, and there's actually two of them. One is so that you can use it yourself if you want to. The other one, we would like you to take and invite someone with. So invite someone in your neighborhood, someone who has kids, someone who you think would have a great time at VBS, and maybe take the two and invite them, or maybe you have 10 people you want to invite, and we have a bunch more at the back table. You'll also see that we have a prayer wheel set up in the lobby, and that is for VBS. We want to have VBS covered in prayer for the whole week, 24 hours a day. So you can go and sign up for a slot on the prayer wheel and join in in praying for the event, praying for the kids, the leaders. Like, we all need energy, too. We all need Holy Spirit filling, especially when we're tired. So go and sign up to be part of that prayer wheel. And then lastly, as far as VBS is concerned, we start transforming this place on Monday. So you get like a little sneak peek of what the stage is going to look like, but it takes a lot of work. So you don't have to be creative. You just have to be able to follow instructions. <laughs> the creativity has been done, but we need to hang things and move things and set it all up. So each night, Monday through Friday, there will be a team here working from 5.30 to 8.30, transforming this whole place into a medieval castle. So you want to come out and help, we would greatly appreciate it. Next, we are just a couple weeks away, right guys, from going to Louisville, Kentucky as a youth group to go and minister. And so we have one last fundraiser we're doing next week for Father's Day. We are doing a pancake breakfast. So that we will be serving fresh pancakes from 9 to 10 to, um, next week and sausages and orange juice and, you know, a a nice breakfast. So come and join us for that. We're going to ask that if you wouldn't mind using that QR code and registering for it, only because this is a fundraiser and we don't want to spend a lot of money buying a ton of food that isn't actually used. So if you don't mind taking a few minutes to register just to give us an estimate, that would be really helpful for us. So do that today. And then lastly, next week, Father's Day, there's going to be all sorts of fun stuff. Pancake breakfast, we have a little something for the dads, but we're also going to be outside. So outside service next week, please bring your lawn chair with you. And um, we're just really looking forward to being out in nature, worshiping the Lord together. Amen. So if you wouldn't mind joining me in prayer, let's enter back into worship and turn our hearts to the Father. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for today. I thank you, God, that you created this idea of corporate worship. Lord, just as there is fellowship between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord, there is a special fellowship that takes place when believers join in heart together to worship. And so, God, I pray that you would help us leave our worries and cares at the foot of the cross. Lord, that you'd help us to turn our attention into your throne room. And, Lord, that you would just help us to move into a posture of worship. Lord, we pray that your spirit would be here moving amongst us. And that you would prepare our hearts and our minds to hear what you want to share with us from the word as well. So Lord, we welcome you, Holy Spirit, into this place. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Church, I'd invite you to stand with us. the key
Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I hide. The ransom for my love, oh, here's my song. Cause you are good, you're good, oh, you are good, you're good, oh. Every time I come around, I find grace on repeat. You welcome me with open arms, no matter where I have been. Every time I surrender, every time I fall, I find grace more precious than I did before. So I'm gonna lay my out of your feet up to the heavens for all I need I'm gonna sing my heart out praise on repeat to the God who's never given 
giving up on me. You're the mercy in me. You're the kindness at all. My hope in every weekend. The strength I lean on. Every time comes sun down. In the night set let my soul remember just how good you've been And again and again my heart will sing I'm gonna lay my world Here at your feet Look to the Jesus, we love you. Jesus, thank you for your grace in our lives, Lord. It's because of that grace that we've decided and we've chosen to follow you, God. Thank you, Lord.
it's a world that can ever satisfy Through every child my soul is seen No turning back I've been set free Come on, hear you sing And cry
Jesus, you are enough. Lord, the things of this world, they'll come and fade, God, but your love is forever. So this morning, God, I just ask that in our hearts that you would do something new, God, that you would help us to put you at the forefront of everything we do in our life, God, that everything that we do in our life would bring you glory. that there's nothing that's going to satisfy you, satisfy us but you, Jesus. So we submit our lives at the cross, God, and if there's somebody here today that hasn't made that decision, Lord, I pray that they would, God, that they would come to know you, that they would come to know you intimately as their Savior, God, and they would know the love and the peace that there is to give their life to you, Father. You never told us it would be easy, but you told us that you would be there with us. So I pray for that today in this room, God. I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for what you're going to continue to do. So God, I just ask you to help, help us. I just ask that you give us understanding and wisdom through your Holy Spirit to understand the things that you want us to today, God. That we would put aside distractions and that we would listen to what you have to say to us through your word, God. Thank you so much for that. So Lord, we love you and we give this time to you. We submit it over to you, Jesus. And it's in your precious and holy name we pray. Thank you, Christian. Thank you. Well, today we want to honor our graduates. We have five people that we want to honor today. And so if you're here, if you would just stand, and then in a few moments, we're going to pray for you. Stand, Just stand up, wave, sit down. So first I want to recognize Noah Walters. Where are you at, Noah? There's Noah. Give it up for Noah. Yes, you can. Congratulations. He's a graduate of Cornerstone Christian Academy, and he's going to be heading to Mercyhurst College. And then Kayla Maiden. I don't know if Kayla's here today. Kayla, hey, Kayla, good to see you. All right. <laughs> Kayla is a graduate of East Lake North and Auburn Career Center. So, Kayla, congratulate. And you're going to become an EMT and a firefighter. Okay, okay, fantastic. All right. <laughs> and, and, and Chloe Gunton is not here this morning. But Chloe, you know, is uh, part of our worship team and ha is now doing an internship with a worship team. She's a graduate of Madison High School. And so uh, I know Bob and Lisa are very proud of her, their granddaughter. So, yeah, give it up for Chloe. Yeah, Chloe. Yeah. <laughs> then we've got Mr. Daniel Ullman over here, graduate of Liberty University. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Bachelor of Science. <laughs> Okay, okay, all right, that's fashion, fashion, <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Psychology, and he's going, uh, he also has a degree in Christian counseling, so way to go, Daniel, way to go. All right, and Callie Lutz, Miss Callie, stand up back there, Callie, in the back there, yay, Callie. She's, she's graduated from the IOACC Bible Institute, three-year theology degree with a three-year way to go Callie so we're just going to pray for you guys so the people that sit up if they're by you just kind of put a hand on them and near them and praise the Lord for them so let's just pray for them we're, you know when parents uh dedicated their children they entrusted them to the grace of God and so we're entrusting these people to the grace of God let's do that Father God we thank you for these ones that have worked so hard and put in so many years to be able to today and to be recognized not just here in this place but other places and understood that they've done the hard work and done what's necessary to to graduate so thank you for them and thank you for helping them along the way and, and lord god we we entrust them to you as they go forward to take what they've learned to take what you've taught them to take what you've taken them through and to use it in a way that will bless you god and will bless others. Please, Lord, help them to do that. And we entrust them to your grace that you'll work in their lives in a way that will lead them and guide them in such a way that they will truly be pleasing to you and a blessing to others. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And uh, today, we have a special treat for you. Uh, my pastor, who, uh, when I first got saved, who discipled me, who uh, 
uh, made, you know, walked me through the ordination process, ordained me as a pastor who uh, did our wedding, Wendy and and I did our wedding. Our my pastor uh, is up from Florida, and he's here today along with these and his wife, his wife Carol. There's Carol Beresford. She and she's a director for Hannah's Home. Many of you've heard of that. And then Gary, Gary, her uh, son-in-law to her, her right, and then her grandson. We got John Paul and his girlfriend. Is it Caitlin? Got it, Caitlin. And then their daughter Robin. There. These are friends of years. Uh, I don't know, 35 years, we were saying. It's been, it's been a while. So, Pastor, would you come on up? Um, we're going to have yeah. you bring the word today. I'm going to pray for sure. you. And, uh, and so let's do that. Oh, that'd be fine. Man. Thank you. Good. Good morning, everybody. Let's go. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for my dear pastor. Thank you for his friendship. Thank you for his guidance. Thank you for his love. God, I pray that you would bless him now and open our hearts to receive what you want to speak through him to us from your word. Thank you so much for him, Lord. Help him today as he shares your truths with our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. Well, it's a delight, my goodness, to be with you. How long has it been? Two or three years, Randy, since we've been together? Yeah, no, I don't think so. It's been a while. Well, since we've been here last, I've turned 83 years of age. <laughs> that's, a, that's a season. And in July, next month, July 22nd, I will, meet, will be married to the most beautiful lady in the world for 62 years. Huh? Huh? So we journey together all this time, and we're so, so, so thankful for you coming from a strip mall in Eastlake, Ohio. Hmm? And look what God has done. I, I come this morning, and it's such an emotional thing, Randy, to see what God has done in this ministry and through your leadership and your vision. I'm, I'm going to share something with you about Randy. I probably shouldn't do it, but I'm leaving Tuesday anyway. So, uh, uh, But I don't think any of you know this about your pastor and his wife, but I do. And so I'm going to share this with you. Um, many, many, many years ago, we went to Hawaii. Randy and Wendy were on a mission field over there in the island of Molokai. And while they were there, the church, what was the church, Randy? What was the name of the church there? Molokai Baptist Church sent Randy and Wendy to Moscow, Russia as goodwill ambassadors for that church and for that entire ministry. Did anybody know about, you know about that? No, you knew it, did you? Yeah, you did. <laughs> so they flew him over, flew them over, and they landed, and they met all the different dignitaries, and the person that was in charge of them, their consulate while they were there, his name was, was Sir Rudolf Redvik. And Sir Redrick was the one who was in charge of taking them around and showing them around and all that, which he did. So it was an afternoon. It was a, it was a cold afternoon, kind of a rainy cold afternoon. And, and Mr. Redrick says, it's beginning to rain. And uh, Wendy, remember Randy, Wendy, she says, uh, actually, uh, Mr. Redrick, it's, it's not raining. It's actually sleeting. It, it's half rain and half and half snow. And Mr. Rudolph Redvick said, uh, with all due respect, it is raining. And Wendy, as sweet as she says, is, is, with all due respect to you, Mr. Redvick, it's, hey, it's sleeting. It's raining. And it went back and forth. And finally, Wendy, Wendy said, Randy, would you please let this gentleman know it's, it's, uh, it's sleeting. And Randy said, Wendy, I'm sorry, honey, but I have to, I have to agree with Mr. Mr. Redneck. Actually, it, it, is, it is raining. Whew. So they go back to the hotel and get ready for dinner, and they get in that hotel room, and Wendy just laid into him. She said, how could you do that to me? How could you embarrass me in front of that no good red, that red, red Vic? And Randy said, because Rudolph the Red Nose rain, dear. <laughs> anyway, 
Most guest speakers tell jokes. That one, you're not going back there again, right? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway, I'm so thankful for you, Randy, and Wendy, and your family, for this wonderful church family. Thank you for letting me share some thoughts with you. Um, huh. Yeah. I, I thought much about today and, and the privilege I have to sit here before you representing our blessed Savior and to share some thoughts. I want to be encouraging to you. I'm only here for a few hours and we're gone. And so if you have your Bibles, I'd like you to turn, if you would please, to the book of Romans, chapter 7. While you're turning there, go back in time with me to August the 28th, 1963. How many of you were alive in 1963? Just raise your hands. A few. Many were not. Okay. On August the 28th, 1963, 250,000 plus people gathered in front of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. to hear a gentleman give a speech. You know who that gentleman was? Dr. Martin Luther King. And he gave this speech, and it was a fiery speech. A speech about freedom and being free. And as he came to the conclusion of this amazing speech, you can watch it on YouTube. I watched it just this past week. He said these words, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. Freedom is a marvelous thing, is it not? Something that we all take for granted. We just celebrated Memorial Day. And the thousands and thousands of men and women that pay the ultimate price for us to be able to sit here today. Our country isn't perfect. It's the best country in the world, you know? And thankful for America. Thankful for, I would not know what it would be like not to live in freedom. But wouldn't it be a wonderful thing as Dr. King said, to be free at last from the influence of sin. To be freed from the influence of sin would be a marvelous, marvelous thing. Those of us who know the Savior today and walk with him will quickly admit that there is a struggle that we all face with sin. It's real. And sometimes that struggle can be, folks, overwhelming. And for some people, I'm sure, Randy, you've counseled some, I know I have counseled many, this, this struggle is so discouraging and so distressing that they become depressed and ridden with guilt and thoroughly, absolutely frustrated. And when that happens, it becomes very easy for the enemy to come in and ride in like a, like a flood on these feelings of discouragement and depression and destroy the self-image of the Christian engaged in this battle. And we feel so defeated. And folks, there's no pill we can take. There's no quick fix. There's no vaccine available. Now, for most of us, I'm sure in this room, maybe all of us, we, we, we want to please God. We've sung magnificent praise, music to God. Thank you, praise team, for leading us in such amazing worship as we've corporately sung praise to God. And we want to please God. When Jesus became our personal Savior, by that I mean when we confessed our sins to him and invited him into our lives, God implanted in us immediately a new nature. The Holy Spirit immediately entered into our lives. We became new creatures in Christ. And this, and this new nature desires for us to live in accordance with God's word and God's will. But we haven't arrived into glory land yet, and so we still have this old nature that's called the flesh. And this old nature constantly seeks to 
to reassert itself and raise its ugly head in our lives. Randy, can I get some water, Randy, please? And what genuinely happens is there is a sense of, of um, what, confusion, I guess, exasperation, and we ask questions like, what in the world is going on? Why am I struggling with this thing? Why am I battling with this thought, with this action? Uh, why can't I get victory over this thing? What's happening to me? Maybe I failed God. Maybe I'm not even a Christian after all. What am I missing here? Is there any way to be free at last from the influence? Thank you, Randy. And can I get a stool or something? Randy, set this down, like a little stool or something. Any one of your pastors is a great guy. He's just <laughs> servant's heart. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, Randy. No, it's, it's, I'm sorry, Randy. You can take it back. I don't need it. <laughs> Far fear for me to embarrass your pastor, but let me tell you, I'm, your pastor and his wife are dear, dear to Carol and I, and we, it's just been such a joy to see them, their walk with God, and to see all of you here in this place. It's just, it's an overwhelming, thanks, Ron, that's great, okay. Is there a way that we can be free at last from this incredible influence of sin? Now, let me say this to you this morning, we are in good company in the struggle of sin. Because in Romans chapter 7, we find a man who is going through the exact same struggle as we are. He's quite a fellow. His name is Paul. <laughs> Paul the Apostle. No doubt the greatest Christian human being who ever walked the planet. And in verse 15, he opens up his, his life to us this morning. This transparency. As he says in verse 15, I don't understand what I am doing. For what I want to do, I don't do. But what I hate, that he says, is what I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it's no longer I myself who do it. Look at this. But it is sin living in me. This is Paul the Apostle, folks. I know that nothing good lives in me. That is, in my sinful nature. I have the desire to do what's good, but I cannot carry it out. For what I do is not the good that I want to do. No, the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. And the Greek phrase there is a continuous phrase. I keep on doing the same thing. Now, verse 20. If I do what I do not want to do, it's no longer I who do it, he says. But it is sin living in me that does it. So, I find this law at work. What I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see this other law at work in the members of my body. And in this law, he says, it's waging war against the law of my mind. Look at this. And in making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. Church family, Paul struggled with the same conflict you and I experienced, the same thing. It was the struggle of his attempt to try to live for Jesus. And in these, these pages of his book, this book, he openly and genuinely shares that struggle with us this morning because it was real. And by being vulnerable and open and completely transparent with us, he seeks to be an encouragement to us on this June 11th morning. By sharing his struggle, he hopes to free us from ours. The man had come to the end of his rope. Verse 24, what a wretched man I am. How about that? Who will rescue me from this body of death? And so it's obvious that Paul had come to his own, see his own self-worth, his own self-effort for what it was. And folks, it was not enough. Now, starting in chapter 8, 
He will share with us this morning the key, all right? The key to being free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty we can be free at last. Number one. For us to be free at last, we must realize that, number one, write this down, sin cannot claim you. Please jot that down. Sin cannot claim you. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Stop. Therefore, say the word, there is what, folks? Now, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Jesus Christ, the law of the Spirit of life, notice this now, has set me free from the law of sin and the law of death. Now, because of our great, 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 great decades old grandparents, Adam and Eve, sin entered the world. We know that. The Word of God teaches that we're all sinners. We all are aware of the fact that we are under condemnation. We deserve judgment. The Word of God says the wages of sin, you know that it is, is death. Uh, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. Okay, we know that. We accept that. But the Word of God also tells us that when we come to the Savior, let me explain what that means. When we come to the Savior, by that I mean when we come to the point in our lives, when we just reach out to the Lord Jesus by faith and say, Lord Jesus, I, I know I'm a sinner. I believe you died for me on that cross. Please come into my life and save me. That's what we're talking about, coming to Jesus. And the Lord saves us and the Holy Spirit comes into our lives, okay? The Word of God tells us that when we come to Jesus Christ, folks, you and I are forgiven, period. The heavy weight of sin is lifted. We are now free. Now, I know that's true. I can sit before you this morning, not as some proud, cocky person, but because I've experienced Jesus Christ's love and forgiveness in my life, I am free. But knowing I am free. And living and walking and functioning in that freedom is very, very, very difficult. And let me tell you, our main difficulty, our primary difficulty, is dealing with that old nature called the flesh. The Apostle Paul talks about in Roman, or, uh, Ephesians 6, this warfare that goes on, constant battle in our lives between good and evil. That's the struggle. And the struggle itself causes us to feel condemned, just like the Apostle Paul. He throws up his eye, what a wretched man that I am. So Paul is saying to us this morning that sin cannot, listen, cannot claim us because the Lord Jesus Christ has set us free. Period. Jesus Christ has set us free. The law has no longer any jurisdiction, any right over us. We are, ab folks, we are absolutely free in the Savior. We are free from the bondage of sin. We are free, Paul tells us, from the law of death. We are set free now to live in this dynamic, amazing relationship of a living union with the Savior. We are free in Christ Jesus. Man. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean to be in, in Christ? That's a, that's a neat, neat thing. To be in Christ means simply that God now sees us, and this is just such an such amazing thing to me, sees us as united, joined to his Son. Because of what Jesus Christ did on that cross 2,000 years ago, we are free from sin's dominion, and we are supernaturally placed or adopted into the family of God. What I'm saying is we are now children of God. Is that worth an amen? 
We are, we're God's kids. We have all the privileges of that. Verse 15 says, Romans 8, 15 says we can call him Abba. That's a very difficult term to define, but the nearest we can get is that he's our dearest father. God is our dearest father. He has adopted us as his children. We are his sons. We are his daughters with all the rights, prerogatives, privileges, inerrant to being in that amazing relationship. John tells us what in chapter 1, verse 12 of his book, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right or the authority to become children of God, even to them who believe in his name. We're God's kids. The truth of what this word of God is saying to us this morning is that in Christ we have been set free. Now, folks, that's the truth. That's the truth. It's the truth whether you believe it or I believe it. It's still the truth. It's the truth whether you feel it or not. And listen, be very careful when we talk about feelings here, okay? God is not calling us to act upon our feelings. God is calling us to act upon this book right here, right? The Word of the living God. God's Word. And I think this morning what, what I, what we might need is a new self-image, one that's based on God's Word, not on our feelings, Feelings are very, very, very destructive. Feelings can put us in all kinds of different situations in life. It's a truth based on this holy book, God's Word. We are personally free in the Savior. Sin can not claim us. We're in Christ. Christ has set us free from the law of sin and death, verse 2. We are individually free in the Savior. Ah, is that refreshing or what? Man. Okay, number two. To be free at last, we must realize, secondly, that sin cannot condemn you. Sin cannot condemn you. Look at verse three. For what the law was powerless to do and that was weakened by the sinful nature, look at this. God did. Huh. And how did he do that? He did it by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful man to be this sin offering. And so he, can, he condemned sin in sinful man. I, I, I. You know, I've, I've had the honor of being a Christian for a lot of years, folks. You know, And the honor of being a pastor for... 30, 36, 37 years. And there's been no greater life that God has given to me to know him all those years. But to realize that that sin cannot condemn us. There's no condemnation anymore. Christ condemned the sin, not the sinner. And because of our Lord's work on that cross some 2,000 years ago, he judged Sin. Get this. I know you heard it before, but may it never become complacent to us. Listen. Jesus Christ paid the penalty for our sin. All of it. He released us from the condemnation of sin by his death on the cross. Jesus did what we could never do. Verse 3. What the law was powerless to do and that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did. Jesus Christ was sent in the likeness of sinful flesh. Remember that? Merry Christmas. <laughs> and he was sent as an offering for our sin. He came as God-man to live victoriously over all the bondage of sin. Yes, he lived a sinless life, but that was not enough. He had to go to the cross and become that sacrifice on that cross for us. And if he did not go to the cross, we would never, ever be free. We would be condemned. And what the Savior did when he went on that hunk of wood has been called the greatest transaction, the greatest exchange in human history. At that point, he made a complete, total payment for our sin. Jesus took, took all of our sin on himself on that cross. 
all the things we've done wrong, all the sin, all those things we've struggled over and felt guilt over, all of it. Jesus bore those on the cross. All of them. Through his death, he paid the penalty for our sin. He was judged instead of us. And so because he was judged for our sins, we can now go free, free at last. Of all, Randy, of all the statements that the Savior made on the cross, I suppose the one that just is the most personal to me is when he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And in that moment of time, for the only time, in all of time, God the Father was separated from God the Son. In that moment of time, when Jesus cried out, Why? God the Father turned his back on his Holy Son because his Holy Son became all of Paul Beresford's sin. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 is a verse I've preached on several times. Randy, perhaps you have as well. Paul says, God made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us so that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. What in the world is that? God took his son, who knew no sin, and he plowed him on that cross to become all of my sin, past, present, and future, so that I can become all of God's righteousness. I will never, ever, ever understand that marvelous love of God. To put all, I, I know Paul Beresford like none of you know him, okay? I know who I am. Past, present, future. He took all of that so I can become all of God's, so I can become God's kid. <laughs> so I can become a child of God. In all of my shortcomings and warts and blemishes and folks, there's a lot of them. God sees me like he sees his own son. Perfectly righteous. And I'm free because of the love of the Savior for this old wretched guy up here. You say, well, Paul, that's fine. I still struggle. I know. I know. Me too. I know. We struggle. Romans 7 makes that clear. We still fight, and too many times we lose the battle. I know. I know. We don't want to lose, but we do. Sometimes we, we, we try to, to live victoriously, and, and then we fail miserably and in spite of our good intentions. I know we're still human, but this book that you hold in your hand, God's Word tells us that there is right now never, ever any condemnation, plain and simple, to those who are in Christ Jesus even when we sin. Now, we're not talking about conviction here, folks. There's a whole lot of difference between conviction and condemnation. The Holy Spirit convicts us, doesn't he? Sure. Something we've said, something we've thought, whatever, and, and we go to God, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God doesn't say, hey, shoot me a text and I'll think about it next week. We'll come back together and see about it. Instantly, Instantly, that sin is forgiven. Think about it. Instantly. No more guilt. We're free. What an amazing thing. Okay, one more, and then we will be all through. Okay? Sin cannot claim you, number one. Sin cannot condemn you, number two. And finally, sin cannot control you. The last part of, of verse three. And so he condemns sin and sinful man in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the Spirit. So finally this morning, we need to understand that sin cannot control us. We struggle, yes. 
but we have the victory. 1 Corinthians 15, 57, thanks be to God who gives us the victory in our Lord Jesus Christ. We have the victory because we are in Christ and because God is right now working in us. It isn't something that just happened 2,000 years ago. That's where it started, to live in freedom. But God, this very moment, this very day, is working in us, folks. Sin cannot control us because God is at work in us to change us. Romans 8.29 for those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his own son. So today, part of God's work in us is to conform us to the likeness of the Savior. I hope I'm a little bit more like Jesus today than I was a year ago. You know, I hope as I've grown over these years, not perfect yet, no way, but a little bit more like him. Matthew 5, 16 that I'm letting my light shine a little brighter today, that they may see my good works, Randy, and glorify my Father in heaven. You know, that I walk with him closer today than I did before. God has conformed me into the image of his Son. That's what it means to walk, not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit in verse 4. So as we walk by this Holy Spirit, it means that we live our lives in complete and total dependence upon the authority and the leadership of God. That's all I have to say. It's enough. Let, let me close with, a, with a, 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 a quick story. This is, not a, this is a true story, I believe. And it kind of ties in with what we've talked about this morning. <coughs> yeah, no. No. In the days of the Civil War, there was a, a gentleman by the name of Matthew Brady. He was the photographer for the war. Most of the pictures that you will see during the history of our country the Civil War is, were, were taken by Mr. Matthew uh, um, Brady. And he wrote several articles about the different photographs that he, that he took. Um, after the, the surrender terms were signed in the McLean House at Appomattox Courthouse, Virginia, slavery was over. There were thousands and thousands of people who were property instead of human beings. Freedom had come to them. And Mr. Lincoln had, had signed the, the uh, Emancipation Proclamation, and slavery had come to an end. Matthew Brady took a picture several weeks, I believe, after the, the surrender of President Lincoln riding into Richmond to greet the people. Lincoln was a tall, tall gentleman, as you know. And as Matthew Brady tells it, as Mr. Lincoln rode into town in this big, beautiful black stallion with a stovepipe hat, you know, bigger than life, these precious people would line both sides of the road and look at him in awe. Here was the man who had set them free. And according to Mr. Brady, one of these dear people shouted out these words. The Messiah has come. The Messiah has come. And we're free. Others began to chant those terms. Now, obviously, Mr. Lincoln was not the Messiah, but they looked at this incredible man on this horse as the person who had given them their freedom. My dear church family, this morning, thank you for letting me be with you and share these thoughts. My final word to us is the Messiah has come. And sin cannot claim us, sin cannot condemn us, and sin cannot control us. You know why? Because we're free. We're free. Father in heaven, there's no way to even begin to comprehend the incredible love that you have showered upon these, your people. 
And, Father, I am so grateful for your love and your forgiveness in my own life. And to realize, Father, that, that because we're still human, we, we fail, we do that, God. I mean, we just do. We just do. Let's just be open and honest with you, God, today. We do. And I'm so thankful, Father, that you never, you never condemn us. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So, let Randy, I'm going to walk down here if I may. And while our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, let me just walk down here with you if I may. You know, I'll be going home in a couple of days. And these moments that we spent together this morning will be gone. And I want to thank you so much for letting me share my heart with you today. And maybe we could just, just, just close our eyes for, for just a quick moment, just a quick moment. And, and I don't know, you know what you're struggling with today, what you're dealing with in your life. I know some of the things I'm dealing with, you know, even before I could speak to you today, I had to get a couple of things right in my own life. How can I sit up here and share with you if I'm dealing with these things? And so I'm so thankful that there is no condemnation, that God forgives every sin, no matter what it is. And so, my dear one, maybe today there's something in your life, maybe your family, maybe your marriage, maybe your children, maybe your job, maybe in your thought life, maybe in, in, in your entertainment, whatever it might be, and you're battling this thing. And please understand that there's no condemnation if we just confess that and make it right. So every head being bowed now and every eye closed, you say, Paul, I, there's just something I'm just really dealing with right now. I just need to get that right. We're all together in this room. Nobody's looking around. Would you uh, just just look at me? I, I'll, look, I'll look at you, and you look at me, and we'll kind of kind of connect our eyes together and say, just pray for me. That's all I'm asking. Just, that's all, just, just pray for me. Thank you. Just just. I'm just dealing with something right now. Thank you, hon. Thank you. Thank you, sweetie. I'm just gonna walk. I'm just gonna walk down the aisle and just thank you for that hand. I thank you so much. Just, just something. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, sir. God bless you. There's just some things I just need to deal with right now, and I'm battling with things. I'm struggling just like the Apostle Paul. Thank you, honey. Just like the Apostle Paul, man. I'm in good company. That's for sure. Because I'm dealing with these things. I'm just gonna ask God to take this away right now. With this beautiful worship center. God is here among us. The Spirit is working among us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. My goodness sakes. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe there could be even someone here today who's come into this beautiful place and met Pastor and met some people and say, you know, I've heard what this, what Pastor Paul said, but I don't know for sure. I don't know for sure if, if I were to die today, if I would be spent, you know, eternity in heaven. I don't know. But I'd like to know. I'd like, I'd, like to, I'd like to ask Jesus to come into my life. Just like with the other folks who just looked at you, Pastor Paul, I really want to invite the Savior into my life today. I need to be saved today. I just do. I need to have my sins forgiven. Would you please pray for me? Thank you, darling. Thank you, honey. Pray for I need to be saved. Good night. Good night. I need to ask Jesus in my life today. I need Jesus as my Savior today. Please. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Just pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I know I'm, I know I'm a sinner. Just like we talked, we're all sinners in this room. But I believe, Lord Jesus, you died on that cross for me, personally. I want to be in Jesus. And so, Lord Jesus, forgive my sins and come into my life and save me, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you, friend. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Paul. Love you. Pray, pray for them. Pray for them, Randy. Pray oh, for yeah. Them. Gonna pray in a few moments. Take a look at the screen. We're just gonna have a few moments now where just a time of prayer and meditation from everything Pastor Paul shared, just what happened now. If you just take a few moments just to think about what have I learned or been reminded about God today? Something wonderful, something beautiful. What does God want you to do with what you've learned? And, uh, if you're somebody who said that prayer today, you said that prayer to receive Christ as your Savior, would you please let the person know who brought you? Would you please let me know? Would you let someone know that you made that decision today? But let's go ahead and take a few moments now just to think about these things. I'm going to pray, and then uh, in, a, in a little bit, Christian will ask us to stand, and we'll close in worship. But let's go ahead and pray right now. Dear Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for... Lord, 
taking all of us, your church, this church, like a bride, the church throughout the world, like a bride, and giving us to your son. And Jesus, thank you for doing what was necessary for us to be that bride, for us to be God's children, for us to be sons and daughters of the Father. Thank you, Jesus, for taking our place on that cross. This was shared today. You who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. Thank you. Thank you. Please bless this time now as we meditate, as we think about these things, and then as we close in worship, I pray in Jesus' name. Church, would you stand with us as we close? You unravel me with melody. You surround me with the song of deliverance from my enemy. Till all my fears are calm And I'm no longer a slave to fear And I am a child of God And I'm no longer a slave to fear For I am a child of God From my mother's room, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. 
Sin in your life, things that need to be changed. I trust the Holy Spirit is, is doing that right now, even as we stand in this in this beautiful worship center. For those who made salvation decisions, what a wonderful, that's the most greatest decision you'll ever make. And you know, folks, God has given you a wonderful thing here. Don't ever take it for granted. God has blessed you so abundantly. This is this is God's church for his glory. And this is his witness right here in this place. And God has given you such a marvelous responsibility to serve him and to honor him and to glorify him. Heavenly Father, um, I'm overwhelmed, Lord, again, with, with, the, with the wonderful privilege of sharing with this precious church family. Uh, thank you for Rand and Wendy and, jeez, all the memories we've shared together to see what you're doing in their lives, Father. You're using them in such a wonderful way. But I pray for the leadership of our church, Father, for the staff, for every person here. Father, I pray for families. I pray for the future. I pray for vision. Lord, thank you for for moving in the hearts of so many people today. And thank you for allowing me the privilege of sharing, Father, your precious word. Dismiss us with your blessing, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you so much. Enjoy your day. Let's have lunch or something, huh? <laughs>